This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Hey everyone, I'm your host Danny, and I'm the first time reader going through this series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co host Bratz, who's a longtime fan, and he's guiding me through this journey. We'd like to acknowledge and thank our executive producers Brandy Nairn Kirkwood, Chad Welsh, Sean McGuire, Yanis, Ricky Morissette, Albert Lorenzo, Eddie Costello, and Light Blinded Fool. And we're also very excited to welcome the Amerlin Seat as our newest executive producer level patron. We are so excited to have you as part of the team. And before we get into things today, we just want to thank and welcome John Cornia to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. Thank you so much for your generosity and your support. We really couldn't do this without you. In this episode, we're talking about chapters 51 and 52 of Lord of Chaos. Yeah, we are finally here. Chapter oh 51, The Taking. Okay. <laughs> chapter 52 doesn't even matter when we're talking about chapter 51. <laughs> chapter 52 held its own though. <laughs> okay, chapter 52, Weaves of the Power. Yeah. Okay, there is really good stuff. Don't get me it wrong. It held its own. It was very interesting. But it's like, holy smokes, oh Rand God. has been taken. <laughs> what an idiot. It's so good. What oh my gosh. an idiot. <laughs> well, if it isn't the concept consequences of my own actions right but i mean hey this i don't want all rand's own fault here. i don't want to completely blame him but I, we have to at least a little bit blame him for what's happening right now yeah, well he left himself completely vulnerable for an attack oh it was all very bad it's all yeah. very poor planning and there's like but that's the thing excellent planning on the ice Eye. it's great i was and actually impressed by their ability to do this they've been planning this from the beginning i know i realized that it might not have been plan a but it was certainly it plan was b. certainly plan yeah yeah yeah, it, well, it's not A, it's plan B, but it might have been plan A in some people's eyes, so. It seemed that way. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And we got to talk, because uh, I, I got some callbacks okay, for stuff, okay, so. Okay, okay, okay. But listen, I need to talk about something really quick before we get started today. Okay. Because I have a reminder to everybody that we are still sending out thank you packages to select people who give us five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts. So if you give us a review on Apple Podcasts, and leave your Instagram or Twitter handle in your review, then I'm selecting people at random and we're sending out free bookmarks, stickers, magnets, that kind of thing. And very exciting. I just sent one out last week to at Marielle, no Mariella. So thank you so much for your super kind and complimentary words. You make me smile every time I read through those reviews. So if you want a chance at getting some of that good stuff, make sure you go leave a review for us. Yeah, and the more you hype up Danny, the better the stuff is going to be, probably. So, <laughs> The better your chances at winning. <laughs> no, 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 no. Definitely selected at random. We appreciate all, all, all reviews, especially those five-star ones. Okay, do you have something to tell us? Yeah, I do. And I think it's a pretty good one because I think that you might remember some of this stuff for this fun fact. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, is it a game? It's not a game because oh. you kind of sort of mentioned to me right before... We started recording here. Yeah. So the fun fact for today is about specimen boxes. Ah. Ah. Okay. So okay. call back as to why we're doing this. So yep. the reason we're breaking down specimen boxes is because way back in chapter 27 of this book, yep. we had Nasoon, who's one of the sisters in the Tower Embassy, after they met with Rand... Uh, she was the one who brought up the hidden sister in the meeting. So the green sister that we kind of hear a little yes, bit about. Yes, okay. okay. And then when they're on their way back to Lady Erelyn's place, Nasun, who's of the Brown Aja, thinks about how never going anywhere without the proper specimen boxes is very important to her so that she can catalog everything properly. That's right. And whatever happens, Nasun intends to write a paper on Rand, and it will be her life's greatest work. Right, and then I made fun of her because I was like, already happening. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, this is the kind of the funny joke. You know, joke. I did note those specimen boxes. I know you did, and you brought them up, and I brought them, it was kind of like a weird kind of thing. And I was like, you know, I was like, oh man, these are going to be important, and I just feel it. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, they're, you know, they're not the ones that were in at the time. Those were like actual specimen boxes. Yes. Because she they were like under the seat. Yeah. But we could kind of imply that Rand is in his own little specimen box. Right yeah, now. but then he's not kept in one. No, forever. no, no, no. Like they brought, they, they, that's how they transported him. We'll talk yeah. about him when we get in the episode. Yeah, yeah. But he's like, he's fine now. But I had to do a little bit of history and fun information on specimen boxes because why not? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. So, first off, there's different names for different types of specimen boxes, and it kind of depends on what you're keeping in them. So, plant specimens are kept in an herbarium. 
types of fungi are in a fungarium. Fun. And the, yeah, f- exactly. <laughs> and then the wood specimens in the xylarium. And I couldn't find anything for like bugs, but I, I'm uh-huh. not really too sure. So it gets a little bit complicated. But okay. anyways, collecting specimens is a very old tradition, but the oldest herbarium that I could find was traced back to Italy in 1532. And I think that's also because like specimens don't keep forever. So obviously okay. that's a thing. Yeah. And that was by placing plant specimens in bound books because it's easier to store those things because they're in books. You just put them on shelves. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, last fun fact information here, depending on the type of specimen, it's going to determine how they're stored. So for plants or plant parts, they can be dried and kept between pieces of paper like books. And then depending on the size, sometimes specimens are stored in boxes or sometimes preserved in alcohol or other preservatives in jars or containers. And then for dragons, you need to fold them in half and then store them in a box and then move them to an underground location. Okay, got it. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know how to feel about <laughs> any of this. Not good. Yeah, I <laughs> you know. Can, you can feel bad about it, but... I don't feel good about it, but also... It's your own freaking fault. Man. Let's get to it. Let's okay. get to it. Let's start this because there's a heck of a lot of stuff. I mean, there is a lot. It's only like seven or you eight know, pages. You miscalculated, you miscounted or something the number of pages. I, I thought did. it was going to be way more and it's not. So yeah. here we are. Last time we were here, Rand was threatened by the Caitlin Aes Sedai and it didn't go great for them. No. And then two more Aes Sedai showed up in Caitlin and ruined everything everything for them right because there was 13 so rand and crew got the f out like immediately yep but things only went medium in kyrian for rand and went pretty terribly for perrin okay yeah like before right now before right now okay <laughs> yeah this was last time on right okay okay yeah Just last time sure. things were going medium for rand and awful for perrin right with barely and Fail. And now Perrin's is still equally bad. Perrin from, is still bad. But and Rand now just Rand's like dropped really way gone. worse. So, yeah. you know, okay. Yeah. Okay. Rand's got way worse. <laughs> He's got problems. Yeah. He's got situations. I got some interesting predictions coming I'm up. excited to hear it because, yeah. I mean, we can talk about the implications of how this is going to turn out. Yeah. I think it's going to go well. I think it's going to go good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did predict there was going to be an I said I thing. You did. Not this. No, I don't think so. But. How can you predict this? That would be impossible. You know, I was kicking myself after. Yeah. That I didn't somehow pick up on something. I actually was a little mad at you. Yeah. For not asking me more leading questions. Well, I would never want to do that. Not I would like never... leading, leading, but I wanted you to be like, do you think this tower, this is just going to sit here and wait for him? Sure. You know? And well, you're going to get annoyed speculate. because I'm going to tell you that I'm pretty sure that I said I, this yeah. is another thing out of their playbook. Yeah. Uh, they seem too skilled at kidnapping people to have this being the first time they've ever kidnapped someone like this. I think they're, they're like just this. sneaky sneak mother effers. Yeah, I don't think, I think that everything they do is rooted in tradition. They don't do like new game plans. I think that all this stuff is stuff that they've done in some way, shape, or f- like in some way before, uh, I don't it's in the Aes Sedai playbook. It is written down somewhere that it. this is how you pull over a scheme. All right. Okay. So chapter 15, <laughs> I just, I'm just not on that side. Oh, I'm not man. on okay. it. I think that these are unprecedented times and we're coming up with new things on the fly that are still within tradition. Aes Sedai are okay. excellent at going by tradition, yep. by skirting the law completely that's still within the law. That's true. That's and we also got to talk like, about... Like, with what's happened with Egwene being the Amerlin without being an Aes Sedai. Yeah. I mean, not technically against the law, but no. we're doing it. And that for sure hasn't happened. Oh, so like, You seem pretty confident. It's all unprecedented times. And I think they're, they're <laughs> just being extra underhanded. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We also have to talk about whose plan this actually is. Okay. So, chapter 51. Yes. The taking. The taking. It's Rand. They take Rand. Yes. Uh, And then two faces black and white, because, which is dark friends. Yeah. Yeah. Because whose plan is this really? Galena. Well, and that's the Maybe. thing. Two of the three sisters there who are leading the charge, Katarina and Galena, are known black Aja. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm jumping ahead. Let's let's yeah. just start the chapter. We'll talk about it when we get there. Okay. So we enter in a Rand perspective. It's the next day from where we left off with Rand last time where he was like okay i'm gonna let the tower i said i have two more meetings with me so that we're all on the same page yeah it's all square yeah 
Now, Rand is getting ready for this meeting, and it's with Sulin. Yes. And it's so funny. Oh, it's so good, too. We cannot yeah. skip over this. I know we have so many other things <laughs> to talk about, but this is hilarious. Okay. She's terrible, and we know this. Yeah. But she's trying to help him into a jacket, and she's clearly never before in her life ever helped anyone into a jacket. Yeah, that's not something that like uh, an I would ever have Never. to do. Never, and it's you know. hilarious. Plus... The amount of sass coming out of her. Oh, sass, and then plus Luz Theron is laughing and laughing away in his head about killing Samuel and Demandred. Uh, except it's Demandred first and then Samuel. The yeah. order is important. Okay. So... For Samuel. I yeah. Mean, and Luz Theron. Yeah, no, D Mandred comes first. Yeah. Then Samuel. Yeah, that's yeah. important for Samuel. <laughs> yes. And why? I don't know. Because D Mandred wanted Ilyena. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, right. Right, I guess it's like. Because he's a, a jelly monster. <laughs> And, and then like, he's like, oh, no, Ilyana, I forgot about oh, that no. for a minute. Yeah, so, like, how... It's like he's laughing and laughing. I thought... Is this accurate information? Like, I don't know, know. I have no idea. <laughs> now, probably. It's probably all exactly accurate. So, <laughs> it's just so funny to me because it's like he's hopping around trying to get into his jacket. And then the next sentence is, Luce Theron is laughing and laughing. And I thought Luce Theron was laughing at Rand trying to get into this jacket. <laughs> I thought he was like the laugh track oh, yeah, of yeah, the yeah. scene because okay. this is like the comedic relief before the tragedy. No, he's just thinking about murder. Just so <laughs> it's good. It's good. Also a good reason to... Yeah, and I love I love Sulin Sass because Rand asks me because Min's supposed to be here. So he's like, is Min here yet? And she's right like, away, do you my see radar her? Yeah. went up, by the way. When she's not here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, do you see her? She's clearly not here. And then Sulin tells Rand that he needs to be respectful with the Aes Sedai because he clearly wasn't with the Camelink crew, and that ended badly. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, where's Min? Go get her. She's still with the Wise Ones. Rand's annoyed because Min knows how important this is. Yeah, she's supposed to be here to read the Aes Sedai. It's an important part of the plan. And the Wise Ones know that this is also very important. Yeah. So the fact that she's not here... It's just rude. It's rude, and yeah. he's pissed, and I go, uh-oh. Oh, like as in she's not here, what's going on? As in, uh-oh, on? where is she? Gotcha. Yeah, and then, as a side note, when Sulin is leaving, Rand asks her, how long, basically, are you going to stay as this terrible maid? Yeah. Mostly because he doesn't want her to be his terrible maid yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that he does directly uh, talk to her about it, too, because that seems like something you wouldn't want to talk about well, because that's kind of yeah. like addressing the shame, yeah, which you're not usually supposed to do. she says, until my shame equals theirs. Yes. So, so however long that's going to be... For her. For her, personally. However she's feeling about this. Yeah. All right. So now, Rand heads into the hall where he'll receive the Aes Sedai by himself not supposed to be by himself yeah but it was supposed to be like min like min would be even if there was someone else in here yeah like if, even if min was in here there was nothing that she could do sure if there was a bunch of aiel yeah like a hundred of them like last time with yeah. the other i said i you yeah. think after that interaction with i said i rand would be more on guard to meet with i said i well he's kind of kicking himself at the end of this he's like why didn't i you know remember what moraine told me god don't about, trust don't any i said i but even after this whole thing like he really thinks he has the upper hand there's actually like a lot of really unfortunate incidents that are leading up to this too yes, because the other bad lot. side is the ban and Shiad being on guard detail yeah because that's they don't another know. But that's that's a part of it is that they're not even looking at the servants and the Aes Sedai. They don't even want to make eye contact. Yeah. Because they are still they this is like a brand new thing to them. And we could talk about it in there in It's right now. Yeah, in the yeah. perspective there. Yeah. So Yeah. Oh well yeah, after. But Chiad is on guard duty and she comes in and she's like, The Aes Sedai are here and instead of Ran being like, They need to wait till I have somebody here or yeah. like more people need to be here with me he's he, like yeah he, he wasn't just lets them in. he wasn't expecting anybody to be here except for men that's part I of the know, issue that too. is part of he the wasn't issue. waiting for anyone else to show no i don't know i just feel like the maidens would have insisted i just feel like something else should have been happening here should have right? been what he's taken ah gosh okay we need liam neeson to come to the rescue here come ah, on ah. that's true yeah he would he would rescue rand yeah he'd kill everybody he'd kill everybody and then rescue rand <laughs> We need a Liam Neeson to come and save Rand. Okay. So, Koirin, which is the gray leader of this embassy. Yes. Right? She's the one who's in charge right now. Okay, I'm keeping track. Yes. So, Galena and another one he doesn't know. Yep. 
and a dozen, quote, serving women come in carrying two big chests again. Yes. Now, here's the thing. The last time, it was serving women with chests of gold. Right. So, here's the thing. They've done this a bunch of times. This so was that the they, plan. It's I don't a pl- think it's been a bunch. I think it's been one. Oh, yeah. The one time. The right. one time. Yeah, because then he left. Because then he left and he pissed them off. <laughs> if they had more opportunities, I fully believe they would continue to bring Definitely. that in. Just yeah. to build like the calmness of people expecting the chest to come in and come out, come in and come out, come yes, in and come clearly. out. clearly. But this is their move. And it's not bad. Oh, it's fantastic. It's, it's an amazing plot because... I can't believe just how competent these Aes Sedai are. Yeah. Like, it's good. But there's also a bunch of things that they got lucky on. That's the part. Him not having anybody else in audience. Yes. Right? Bane and Chad she, she being on duty so that they're Maybe not even they looking at the sisters. they wouldn't have attacked if there were other people there. Maybe there was, like, some other Possibly. things, though, right? Possibly. They could have yeah. gone in and out, in and out because... We've heard from them a bunch of times that they have time to do whatever they want to do. Right. They've been talking about that for a long time. Okay. And we know the other sister is Katarina. Okay. Yeah. But Rand doesn't know her. Rand doesn't know her. Okay. Now, Galena, who's the red black? They're both red black. Karina and... And Katarina Kater- Galena are red black. Galena and Katarina are red blacks. Yes. Okay. So- Galena's like the head. Okay. Yeah, okay. So she starts by saying, it's a pity your green sister's not here today. And then Rand immediately gets like angry and is like, how does she know about Alana? Yeah, and they don't. Because that's what he's thinking. That's what he thinks because, I mean, he does have a green sister now, technically. Technically he does. But? But they don't know that. So no. that, that's going to be my prediction later. So but we'll get to it. And that's the thing. They think that it's Moraine. They think it's technically Moraine. Moraine disguised, disguised as a green. Disguised as a green. Possibly. Even though a couple of them think that that would be deplorable. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because the whole like, oh, there was a hidden green and there's been rumors, which was technically a Egwene, Egwene, who's not here He's not here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> I know. All right. So he has no time to respond, though, because his skin starts to tingle. And as they're embracing Sidar, Rand and Luz Theron at the same time, like, rage out, embrace the power. But it is too late as he's cut off from the power. He's shielded. Boom. And then the Aes Sedai take out their wands and they yell, Petrificus Totalis. Ooh, got him. And Rand is body <laughs> binded and only his eyes can move. Yeah, is that the same way that it works there? Literally exactly the same. Bound, but your eyes can move. Yeah, do you want okay. to? <laughs> yeah, Petrificus Totalis or the full body bind stiffens a person's limbs so they cannot move. Only the person's eyes are free while the spell is in effect. Oh, man. That's like identical. It's exactly the same. <laughs> well, because it's like you're being bound with air, yeah. right? So for Rand, it's like you can't really hold someone's eyes with air. You just like push them inwards of anything. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really work. But I guess so. That's the mechanics. Don't worry, though. But JK hey. JK has never read <laughs> any fantasy. It's good. good. So we got shots and we got new shot glasses. Yeah. And we've got two new ones from our resident founder and creator of Splicky, Chris. Yeah. And he sent us some awesome shot glasses. He actually sent four. Yeah, four. We're using two two today. Yeah, so you go first. Okay, so mine says, no paparazzi, and it's from Hollywood. Classic Hollywood, okay. Yeah. And I have a pretty wicked one. It's actually, it's like a skull shot glass. Like a Day of the Dead skull. Yeah, Yeah. and it's uh, Los Angeles, and it just like screams red hot chili peppers to me. So I love it. Yeah. Fantastic, and it's gigantic, so... That's fun. That's my style. Okay, cheers. Cheers to Rand currently being petrified. Shoot, we shouldn't cheers to that. Yeesh. It's going to get worse before it gets worse, right? I believe you. <coughs> Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, thanks, yeah. Chris, for those shop glasses. We're going to need another shelf. Yeah, we are. Our collection is growing. They don't actually all fit now, so... Now! We're, like, stacking. We're, like, stacking them. We definitely need a new shelf. Okay. <coughs> Anyways. So, he's freaking out. Shoot. LTT is freaking out. Shoot. Everybody's freaking out, except for the Aes Sedai. They're, like, smiling. They're, like, because they nice. know we They know did they've it. won. They did it. They already we won. They did it. And Rand's thinking, like, it's impossible that three well, sisters cut me off. Exactly. He's right. That he is, is right. Impossible. It's true. It's Especially true. Especially once he's already embraced. Totally. Right? He's yeah. like, oh, my God. He pushes to break the shield, and he's just freaking out. 
And then one of the serving women steps forward and she's got an ice at eye face. Ooh, and he's like, oh no, four. But it's like, oh wait, not four. And last time he was really skeptical, like looking at all the servants, looking yeah, at their faces. He was. This time not. He was peering in. And, and they he, acted so fast. They did it. Well, and that's their that's their thing. Like they had the opportunity this time, they did it. And I truly believe if, you, like you said, if there was a huge audience, they wouldn't be doing this. They would go in and out, in and out as many times as they need to. Yeah. This was the time. Waiting for the opportunity when he when he missteps and he yeah, missed up. Yeah, he missed up here for sure. And he was lulled into a very false sense of security yes. by being able to shatter the illusion of the seven I said I, right? Yep. So he thinks this is so easy. I got this covered. No problem. Plus they're sending nice letters and everything. They're so polite to him. So, so. they're so much nicer than those you know? other I said I. And like maybe, maybe he, he's feeling that way. It's It's hard to say. But he's definitely in a bad spot. So yeah. let's keep going. Okay. So Corin comes up and is like, ooh, it's a pity it came to this. I wanted you to come to Tarvalon on your own. Which is probably true because she's a gray. Yeah. But clearly you were never going to do that. Yeah. And then she like trash talks the Saladar Aes Sedai a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And then Ran looks around at all the women here now and realizes that there are 15 yes. Aes Sedai total. And that's the thing. So this is this is big because way back when I got a couple of callbacks here, but we talked about this when they first showed up. They were like, "Hey, we have time." You know, whoever whoever just arrived the other day, right? And then we talked about like, "Oh, how many sisters are there going to be?" And currently, like, there's 15 in the room right now. Uh huh. Yeah. And it's going to get all worse. They're trickling in. Well, they are all trickling in. And yeah. once we get to the basement, we can talk about that too, because there's even more. Oh, yes. So there's a lot here. Okay, so here there are 13 to link and weave a shield that no man can break. Yeah. And two to bind him in air. There we go. And Luce Theron is just like in the background going crazy and then runs away. He's Peacing out. He's like gone. No, thank you. I'm not going through this. Yeah. <laughs> and then Galena walks up and takes the dragon scepter out of his hand and then tells Koirin that she's the captain now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, this is the big thing because it was agreed upon that if it came to this, the red Aja takes charge, and but then, it's not the red Aja necessarily. It's the black Aja. It's the black Aja. Oh my Ooh. God. Ooh. Okay. 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 But I mean, now, that's a big thing too. Thing. Rand is going, oh my God, she is a red Aja. Like he didn't even know from the beginning. Yeah. Like, that's bad. And, like, she's in charge now. So it's like he's taken and the red Aja is in charge. Yeah, and he's like, oh, all it would take is someone walking in to see this scene. I was like, yeah, but then what? Like, what would they even do? Call for help. Yeah. But and that's the thing. then... Every, every I Aiel in the entire, like, would city be there in three would seconds. pile in, yeah. kamikazing through windows, like, jumping in, getting torn up or whatever. So, like, yeah. they would, they would try. They yeah. would do their best. No one walks in. Nope. No one sees this and he's all alone. But I got a couple callbacks. Okay. So, chapter 25, there was mention of this plan as being, like, preparing for failure. Because okay. it was during the chapter when Egwene was spying. Yes. On the, on the palace or whatever you want to right. call it. The house. I bet that's how it was presented to Possibly. the like good I said I. Yeah, and right? there's also a couple <laughs> of like snippets that we overheard. We also heard the sisters talking about, "Do you really believe this is necessary?" And the answer is, "We must prepare for every eventuality." Right. So it's like this was like Plan B, and I'll put that in quotations. Yeah. Because like for some people, like Alina, this was probably Plan Always A. Always Plan A. Of course it is. Like yeah. of course she wants to do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be nice if he was just like, sure, let's go to the tower. Let's yeah. follow the yellow brick road. Let's skip the way all, yeah. like, all the way there. But that's not going to happen. So. Yeah. Okay. That's the thing. Let's talk about Bane and Chiad. Okay. So perspective change to Bane. Yeah. So Bane is standing guard outside where Rand is having the meeting. She looks up, the door's open. And considering the meeting basically just started, it's kind of weird. Yep. Yeah. But Bane still thinks that the Aes Sedai are to be like revered yes. because the Aiel failed them so long ago. Yeah. So she also notes that she she thinks she's averting her eyes because she doesn't want to look at the servants because she's new to all this stuff too, where she probably also has that initial shame of like servants are shameful. So I don't even want to look at them. Right. And any other maiden on guard has been around long enough, long enough that they might be peeking a little bit under those hoods just to like double check stuff. Yeah. Like Dan and, and she has all these yikes. news of like Rand being the car. Karn they don't know like how to feel about her. that yeah. so and then like you said the the reverence towards Aes Sedai in general yeah right 
And then the Aes Sedai tell her that it seems Althor is accustomed to coming and going from Kyrian when he chooses. Technically so they've a true statement. done their homework. Yeah. And then she says, we are not accustomed to anyone walking away from us so rudely. Also if he true. returns, we will also return. If not, our patience is not infinite. Yeah. So it's like all technically true statements, but this is the thing. So we kind of get a breakdown. Bane doesn't know who these Aes Sedai are specifically, but we get that Galena and Katarine, the two red blacks, okay. are the ones who kind of like get up in Bane and Chiat's faces to distract, right? They're like up in their faces talking about it so that Koirin is the pompous one who leads the rest of them down the hall with the trunks already. Yeah. So like she's gone and then they're up in her face so that she, they don't look at all these serving girls. Yeah. So it's like this is planned out to a T. Yeah. And then it's all a bunch of technically true statements that she said, but... If you think that Black Aja can lie, it doesn't technically matter. Well, no. And right now it wouldn't matter anyway because they're around a bunch of other Aes Sedai. So they're not going to outright lie. Exactly. Because even if yeah. they can, which I'm still really not sure That's about. That's why I said that like your impression is that they must it, have to be able to well, probably. Well, no, but... like maybe. That's a huge maybe. Is it a maybe now? It used it to is. be like I you know, were more firm. I know, but now I'm thinking like, ah. <laughs> it's it, it's still thing. a little bit of a maybe for me. Okay. So. Even if, even if yeah. they're in front of other Aes Sedai, it would be and best they're not still, to lie. Yeah, so, yeah, it would be best not to because then that would raise a bunch of weird black flags. Yes. Yeah. Now, Bane and Chiat are like, what the F? And hurry into Ron's chambers. And then that's the end of that. Yep. Perspective change to Perrin. Nandera. Yeah, is you know, here. she's the leader of the maidens. That's right. Okay. With Perrin, who's with Vail and Loyal. And Nandera has told them that Rand is gone. And at this point, Nandera's like, well, he does this sometimes. He slips away, even without one maiden, and is gone for like half a day and thinks we don't know. Yeah. But like, do you know where he might have gone? Because we're still kind of worried. Yeah. So this is part the part of the plan where it's Rand's fault because yes, he has. That's what I, this is like, yeah. this is the part where I was like, well, God, Rand. He's done this your... enough times. And now they're like, well, we shouldn't freak out if he's gone for half a day because he always comes back. Yes. Like every time he jumped, like when he jumped to the farm and stuff like that, yeah. right? Like he goes away and comes back and he doesn't tend to tell anybody. Right. Yeah. So. And he didn't think about how that would be if he ever actually was in trouble. No one would kidnapped. actually know yeah. he's in trouble. Exactly. For at least half, half a day. Half a day. At that's, least. That's why you report your child missing immediately. Right. Just in case. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thanks for that. There you go. PSA. PSA. Do it. All right. So anyway, parent has no idea where Rand might have gone, which isn't completely true Perrin could be like well maybe he went to Tyr sure maybe he went to Saladar like, nothing are... helpful no like if he's across like, the continent I don't know it's like well you know and to be fair Perrin's got his own concerns right now he's got some issues because Fail is playing stones with Loyal and well, won't talk to him he decided that he's not gonna go to the city today he's gonna hang out because he's then he's gonna stay next to Fail all day exactly. every day Barrelane can't like attack him if he's right beside his wife yeah but then but Fail also just still does and yeah. Fail is over this yeah because she doesn't want him beside her all day every day because that's also the worst no and she's not talking to him at all so she's just like kidnapped Ignoring Loyal <laughs> to like spend time with them so yeah and, and again was like i want to go to the kyrian and library <laughs> yeah and loyal got wrapped into their like you know again relationship realms again 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 stop using loyal although probably still because he's been with them the whole time we that's just true. haven't seen it that's true it's not again it's, it's not again still. it's always <laughs> it's, it's always same. for loyal this is loyal's life now <laughs> oh man okay. okay now the interesting part so okay. i didn't even really get a chance to process the fact well, I processed, <laughs> and then I was, like, making all these predictions in my head. Yeah. So it was clear that he was brought out by the Aes Sedai in one of the chests. Yes. That I got right away. Good, yeah. I it, I didn't think that... How do they do this? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. They're like, no, they shoved him no, in there. No, clearly. Yeah. Although, it confused me because I really didn't picture these chests very big. Yeah, big chests. Pretty big. There's a dozen people bringing in two chests. Yeah, I know. I just thought... Six people per box. Yeah, it's like freaking coffins. Like, I yeah. don't know. Like, I... Well, I mean, think of like a giant pirate treasure, you know, the first time it's like spilling out okay. gems and jewels and crowns. Do you and... <laughs> think that these chests are special extendable big chests that you could hide someone in for, say, an entire school year while you're pretending to be them? Oh, my goodness. I can't believe you just did that. Because <laughs> I know that that's a Harry Potter reference, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. I will tell you that I do not We've think so. We've already made this reference before. <laughs> oh. 
We've already, I've already said this exact one, and I tested you on the whole party crowd. Did you? Thing. Okay. Yeah. Did I, I get it right at least? You're yeah, mostly? I, no, I don't know. So Probably. here's the thing. Number yeah, one. Yeah, you did, because you remember the tongue thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So they're not like interdimensional boxes that expand because we do get that he's sore. Not, he's like literally. And he got folded sh- he and got have folded to get shoved in, in there. Yeah. So they don't have like pocket dimensions or anything no, like that. No, I know that. Okay. I know. I just wanted to take no, it. No, that shot. was good. That was good. It actually wasn't that good, but I'll take it. <laughs> okay, well, cheers. Cheers to Rand getting out of that box. <laughs> get out of the step box. Step one, put that dragon in the box. And no, step two, no. take him out of that box. No. No? No. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. 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 Perspective change. Rand is now currently lying on his back in bed. He's out of the box. Is he bound or is he still power bound? Like, uh, that's not definitive. I couldn't tell if he was like actually physically... He's probably bound? not physically restrained. He's in a cage. But he, oh, he's in a cage, but he's on a bed? He's on a bed. Yeah, they have a bed for him. And, and like, a cage. In a cage. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure they say he's in a cage. Okay. More accurate description would be like prison cell. Okay. Because there's yeah. like the iron cage surrounds the bed, the table, and the chair. Okay. So like it's a, it's and a prison cell. And I know Galena cell. comes in. Yeah. And I heard, know that she unlocks. I just pictured it being like she's unlocking a door. Yeah. To the small room. It, it's like a prison cell. But then I guess the other eyes that are sitting outside yeah. the cell. Yeah. Okay. That's basically what's happening. Here. Okay. So. Okay. I can get on board with that. Okay. So. His muscles are aching from being transported here inside the chest because they folded him half with the power and his head was between his knees and he was all like wrapped up. Yeah, just like physic, just like take a half a minute here and think about the fact that he, as like a six and a half foot big dude, was folded in half. So his legs, his head's between his legs and he's inside like a chest. Yeah. Like this is still bound and bound like with cords of air. Like this is so bad. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah, it's bad. No, it's so bad. (laughs) But I do have to give credit where it's due. Sure. And like I have done or have attempted to do throughout reading this whole thing. Okay. Is I'm taking sides of all perspectives here. Okay. Like, you know how I like can look at Elida. Yeah, yeah. And understand Try and look like objectively Objectively about like from their own. About what's going on. These Aes Sedai did one hell of a job. Yeah doing their job here almost like they've kidnapped people before (laughs) which i mean like maybe sure i'll get on board with that (laughs) sort of but here's the thing i don't know if there's ever been such a need sure yeah i get that too i get what you're saying i get what you're saying i just like to push that because you know know. it's it's my own my own little thing and that's fine but i just (laughs) find their whole plan so effective oh when i think about the stupid saladar you know the problem is the Saladar Aes Sedai, from what we know, sure. none of them are inherently evil. That's true. That's true. Like, they're not like a hurt someone at all costs well, I mean, and to that's get the, what I want. That's kind the of difference people. between their two objectives is like, if you come in with the objective of, I want to kidnap you, then I'm expecting you to be an unwilling participant. So it doesn't really matter what you do. Yeah. I'm going to plan to get you. And the Saladar Aes Sedai came in. They want to negotiate. They, they want to work together. They want to work together. Yeah. They want to use each other. Yeah. They want to support him, but wants his support for them. Like, yeah. It's and a- then the whole stabbing kind of threw everything off the rails. And But even that, even yeah. when they thought he was after them, their plan was, let's ignore him. Yeah. And then when we go, we're just going to make ourselves real big and scary. Right. There was no such plan of like, let's kidnap the shit out of his ass. Yeah. Now, again, in (laughs) Galena's defense, because she comes up to him while he's inside the cage and she says like, hey, I intend to deliver you to the tower in reasonable health. So (laughs) eat or you will be fed. Yeah. Like we're going to force feed if you try and starve yourself. But she does say in reasonable health. So I don't really know how to take that. It's kind of like with all the respect you deserve. Yes. Right. So, I mean, I guess this is all the respect that that they feel they feel the Dragon Reborn deserves. Yeah. So, you know, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So some interesting points here. Ran doesn't respond to, to Galena, but we get some of his thoughts to tell us what's happening. Yeah. So there's currently six Aes Sedai sitting around his cage holding the shield. Yeah. And we get next chapter. Yes. That As this is, is tradition. Custom. Yes. 
And when they first pushed him into this cell, some were laughing because he had tried to break through the shield. But now he's just like gingerly reaching out to feel the shield yep. rather than attack it. And he can feel six distinct points of the shield. Yes. And he does think at the end of this chapter, like, hey, that whole six point thing must be important. I just don't know why. Okay. Now, I thought there had to be 13 linked to Good question. like maintain a shield. So here's what we can take from this. Yeah. To take a person, the 13 is the custom because that's what it's going to take to that's absolutely, no man can break. absolutely overwhelm one person. But once we, we have heard this a few times, once a shield is in place, once it's in place on the person, then it's way harder to break out of a shield than it is to cut someone off when they're embracing Sidar or Sidine. Right. So think about like the Nynaeve versus Mulgedian battle. It's way harder to shield someone when they're fully embracing the source, right, than it is to kind of spring on them and get them yeah, first. I know. So here's the thing. I was thinking when he was shielded. Yeah. I didn't realize right away that he was completely like Petrificus Total, like he was completely bound. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was just shielded. Okay. And I was like, oh my God, throw something at their face. Yeah. Distract them, nope. make them break their concentration and their Not weeds gonna or work something. twice. Because that was, I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, get them without the power. Then. Yeah, yeah. Right? No, they're ready for that. The no. interesting thing too is that originally with Loghain too, they also had six sisters Keeping the keeping shield. the shield, and they had thought that if there were five, he might be able to break free. So if there are, yeah, okay. Here's the thing: if there are less, yep, then he may be able to break through. It sounds like there's like hard, you know how with the power and with linking and circles, there's like all these hard numbers where it's like thirteen is the max number of women who can form a circle. Sure. And then you have to add a man before you can add more women. Okay. Right. So it's like there's all these hard rules with the power. So thirteen is the absolute number to overwhelm a man, but it seems like six is the hard number to hold a shield on that, that someone can't that broken. can't be broken. Okay. But five might be broken. Five might be broken. But six is like the hard number. It ain't going to happen, which is why it would make sense we get a next chapter that is custom. And I'll add more to this next chapter. Okay. Okay. So now at this point, Rand's not sure how long he's been here. But so far, 12 Aes Sedai have taken turns around the cell. I want to say cage, but like... It is a cage. Yeah. It's described as a cage. It's a cage. Okay. Shielding him. Yep. But... None of them are ones that he knows. Yes. So he also is not sure how far he's been carried, but he for sure was in some kind of wagon or cart. Yeah. I mean, we know where he is, yeah, right? Yeah, at okay. that house. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why that chick left. I thought maybe to like go against her and then meet up with her husband, or <laughs> which still might have happened. They told her to get the F out. Yeah. They, that's what happened. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but also. Also still maybe, maybe. Also maybe. But like for sure, get out of here. Yeah. Okay. And then this is where he thinks about the sad Moraine advice that yeah. he didn't take. Trust no Aes Sedai, not an inch, not a hair. He got complacent. Yep. And? Well, good thing he's not going to get traumatized by this in any way, right? Like no, He's going to come out of this like, oh, I People trust all Aes Sedai. who have been captured. Yeah. Egwene is doing great. Fine. She's doing great. <laughs> Rand's going to do great. It's all going to be great. You know, there's great. something to be said for resiliency, though. There is. Rand thinks that since the Aes Sedai are clearly channeling a lot... They should be discovered by wise ones walking by and feeling that. Yeah. And all he needs is someone to pass by that location. And then they'll know. feel it. They'll feel the power. They'll be like, ooh, what's ooh, that? What's happening in there? But here's the thing. Here's They've been the thing. planning this whole time. I have absolutely loved your theories and thought process they're, the entire time. they good, I thought. I, I have thought they've been fantastic about like, you trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Because it is a big effing mystery. Yeah. They this have... is good writing. I oh, got man. it. Like, I know it's always good writing, but just like even this like random sentence thought yep. is so set up yeah. because they've been practicing this not to practice their strength power, nope. not to, you know, whatever. It's been so that everybody knows there's always channeling happening in this house. So that once they kidnap the dragon are born and keep them in the basement for a little while, they're nope. not going to be like, oh no my God, what's the chat? Don't even, Except, they don't even think twice. Let me tell you who bats an eye over here. Well, she medium does. She only medium bats an eye at this. Actually, she doesn't actually. <laughs> she not bats at an this. eye at the men thing. <laughs> I know. At the but whole we'll thing. get to it. We'll get to it. But before we move on, also. It's Cerulea. 
Ah, yeah. well, we know. Yeah, okay. So before we move on from Rand's perspective, last thing about these six points yeah, they're of the soft. shield, they're individual and they are soft. And LTT is not around. He is taken off. And he has left the building. Rand wishes he would speak again. Yeah. He's not around for this. But he wants LTT because it's like, hey, give me some friggin' advice, man. That's like, what I wanted. What, the, what do we do? Come on. They lose? need to team up and maybe let LTT take control of the power a little bit. I'm cool bit. with that. I know you are. At this point. I know you are. This would be very helpful right okay. now. But that's the thing. He knows it's important. But I think important. that Theron knows that this is impossible right now. <laughs> so he's like bailing. You know who we need to find Rand? Who? The only person who could exactly pinpoint his location right now. How? Who? Alana? Alana. Alana. Okay. Well, she is roughly a little bit over halfway to Kyrian. Yep. So. How long are they going to wait before they pack him up and ship him off to the tower? That's a good question. Shoot. Ah! <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay. I really thought... Oh, man. What the heck? Cause, Shoot. Uh, I just... You know, I want my prediction of the Alana Rand thing. Yeah. To come true. Okay. The unlikely duo coming together and working together. And Alana now growing fond of Rand. Sure. Unexpectedly. She's like, nobody's treating my order like that. I don't think so. Yes. Okay. And it's really too bad that like Perrin didn't really take that viewing of Min seriously. Gotta stay close. Not too close. Because nah. he's got his own shit to worry about. <laughs> his is wife. Is this Bear Lane's his... fault? Oh, maybe. All of this is Bear Lane's fault. Oh, man. We figured it out. Oh, okay. my God. Perspective change. Cerulea. She's hurrying down the street, passes by the house where the Aes Sedai are keeping... This is such a friggin' cinematic Rand? view in my brain for this scene. I can just imagine is it nighttime her... nighttime in your brain? It's like a little bit night... It's almost yeah. nighttime. Like, she may be like, it's a little bit windy and cool. She's hustling. She's hustling through the street. There's nobody else around. She can barely channel, but oh, she can man. still feel them channeling inside, but she's ignoring it as usual. Because they've been doing it every day and night since they got here, and nobody even thinks twice about it. And holy heck... Did these I said I have an actual plan to get I'm them. very impressed. Oh, yeah. From the beginning, like day one. Yeah. Oh, man. It's so good. So Cerulea thinks about how the maidens are starting to get antsy because Rand hasn't returned yet. Yeah. And they're all muttering that he's going to have some splaining to do this totally, time. Totally, totally. And Cerulea is super bothered because not only is Rand missing, but Min has also vanished somewhere between the tents and the palace and that is a coincidence that Sorelia does not like yeah yeah so it is interesting so min clearly you know met who up should with play them. Sorelia? who judge judy yeah <laughs> you can't just advocate for her forever yeah then. everything <laughs> judge judy <laughs> judge judy also doesn't believe uh, in coincidences that's true that's true okay so I it's love in, Judge Judy. I know you do, but let's talk She's about my spirit. Animal. Let's talk about Min for a second here, because we aren't coming back to Min for this chapter, really. So, Min vanished between the tents oh. and the city, and I know Cerulea doesn't like coincidences, but what do you think happened? Not a coincidence. That just ex- say it. Put it out. Well, Put it yeah, out I there. said I took her too. Do you actually think that that they yes. uh, they kidnapped her? Yes. Okay. Like yeah. when, where, how, I don't why, know. what? I didn't think about it. Do they know men? There's too much going on. I haven't thought about it. I mean, a lot of these, like the last time a lot of these people knew, like men was as El Mandreda in the tower. Right. But unfortunately, you know who also knew who El Mandreda was? Elida. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Elida was 100% like, who's that El Mandreda person talking with all these people that I like don't like? So there's a lot. And it's possible, but... No, because she just showed up. Like, that's not... That was a new wrench in their plan. Yeah. But it's also been 10 days for them to have spied and seen that she literally doesn't leave her on side. That's true. So, Like, they're probably not I'm as sticking, sneaky. Yeah. I'm sticking with Aes Sedai. So, she is also captured by the same Aes Sedai? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that it's been noted that sure. she's always around. She was She was the one in the other box. That's why there were two boxes? No. No? Okay. All right. No, no, no. Cause she didn't even make <laughs> it to the palace. Because Cerulea... Ha- or not Cerulea. I know. It was a joke. Sulin had to go look for her. Yeah. That was, that was a joke. Oh. She wasn't in the other See, box. See, I'm not... I have no time for jokes. Okay. I'm speculating <laughs> no right <now>. time. <laughs> Colin, where's Min? What is going on? Okay. Also, This is you a know? problem. Okay. Okay. So now we're leaving that scenario for who knows how long. I'm okay. a little bit concerned. I don't oh, yeah? know if we're going to hop back. But here's the thing. We've got like four chapters left, right? I know. We do. We have two episodes, four chapters. Chances are we're going to get 18 more perspectives before we're <laughs> done about Rand and Kyrian or something. But there's still hope because Cloud Bowl, right? No. Oh, there's no <laughs> How does this book end? Oh, my God. <laughs> Nothing is going to plan. 
Okay. Well, not our hero's plans anyways. I'm surprised. I think Galena's plan is working out very well for her. Yeah. Yeah. I think Egwene's plan's working out. It does seem to be doing okay. I'm on board with what do, okay. Egwene is we gotta, doing. We gotta get there. We gotta get there. Okay. 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 Chapter 52. Weaves of the Power. Mm-hmm. Because Five you, dice. Chapter you know, symbol. It's Matt. That's how they escape too. Because of the, of the weaves power. of the power. That's how they escape. Probably. Well, that's how they leave. They sneak out. That's yeah. how they sneak. Sneak, sneak. Okay. So, Matt, there's a lot of description here. Yeah, there's a we lot. We end off of this very compact chapter where every word is exciting and interesting. Yeah. And then we jump into this one where there's some really good information. It holds up, but the description factor amps up 18%. It does. He likes to give you excitement and then just like rip it away for three and be like, minutes. you just sit on your horse for a second here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Matt's sitting around a table in the common room of the wandering woman. We get a bunch of description of all the people here. He's playing dice. He yeah. thinks about how his luck has just been mediocre. Yeah. Which is like weird for Matt. Well, it comes in waves. It's not technically lucky to win all the time because then you can't play dice with anybody because no one's going to want to play I with you. I think that that's just what people say when they're not winning all the time. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so then Vannon comes in and he's like, they left again. Yeah. And you remember Vannon, right? Yeah. He's like main, sc- he's main guy. spy guy. Spy guy. Yeah. I know. You didn't even give me a chance to say spy guy. I know. I didn't want you to like get it wrong by accident. I was going to get it okay. wrong. Okay. Vannon is spy guy and he's like, they're gone. Tom doesn't know how. And Matt's like, what the mother reffin mother <laughs> and then he and offhandedly <laughs> says next the daughter of the nine moons is gonna walk in and claim me yes okay and then this guy he's playing dice with the blue-eyed outlander chokes on his drink yeah and matt's like what do you know that name and the man says in a slurred accent yeah what name was that yeah and then matt's like i'm gonna leave because i'm not gonna start trouble no time for that now. Yeah, so here's the thing. If RJ isn't being absolutely <laughs> clear with you, he's like, hey, he didn't just choke on a drink. He also has a slow, slurring accent. And he's an outlander. He's not from here. Yeah. So. So where is he from? Sean Chen. Yeah, he's a Sean Chen. Okay, but here's my confirmation. <laughs> that whole Daughter of Nine Moons thing the has always just been... A definitely, probably situation about the Shan Chen. Yeah. Because of the court of the Nine Moons and the yeah. Ravens and the whatever. Yeah. I put it all together, put the puzzle pieces together, but this is like... This man choking on his drink. It's like, oh, no, this guy... You don't just yell that out. He knows the title. Yeah. Yes. So... He's like, what the fuck that guy just say? Yeah. 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 But seriously, no time for that now. Yeah. But I have a question for you because we have a little bit of time for this now. Oh. So there's oh. a... There's a Shan Chen guy yeah, here know. at this end yeah, that it was critical for Matt to pick this in. Of course there he is. rolled the dice. Yeah, there the is. The dice stopped. Uh-huh, yeah, there is. And he talks about one of the big information pieces that Matt has about marrying the daughter of the nine moons. Yeah, he does. Okay. Yeah. Why is there a Shan Chan guy here? Yeah. Because there's Shan Chan everywhere right now. There are. There's an invasion going mm-hmm. on. Yeah, so this is definitely... I had a gut feeling that this was going to be bad news. Okay. So this whole marrying the daughter of the nine moons, I've never felt like, oh, good, Matt's going to find the love of his life and settle down. Fall in love and marry her. Yeah, it's never felt that way for me. Sure. It's always felt like, because maybe when we get it, it's in Matt's perspective and that's the worst thing that could ever happen to him. It's like, oh, no, Matt's been married off. Oh, no, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So I've never felt that that's a positive thing. And now I got a gut feeling about this in not being great for Matt. Sure. And so maybe this is going to be... The Shan Chan have sent a convoy to Emmons Field I think so they gonna, can pay well, a dowry definitely... to Abel Cawthon and they have now bought Matt. Okay. So <laughs> I think it's more of a Taviran pole okay. situation Fair. where it's going to be happenstance Taviran stuff. Okay. That ends, he ends up being married? Yep. By like, okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. By some crazy Abu Dar custom <laughs> to a Sean Chen, like, noble. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh no, you... What you, a wild ride. You did your 17th duel in the city and now you're married. It's yeah, like something weird. Yeah, and then weird. she's going to get a marriage knife. <laughs> right. Okay. Love it. I love that. Okay. So probably not. Okay. But along those lines, it's not far off. Okay. I like it. It works. 
Now we can move on. Yeah. So we get a bit of an update about how things are going for Matt at this inn. He's formed a bit of a relationship with the innkeeper and the innkeeper's daughter is like taking care of Oliver. Yeah. Who said that she's always wanted six boys and yeah. now she may not. Well, and Oliver's also like, Matt's, a like a, Matt's a Lord patron. So the innkeeper is like, hey, take care of the kid. Help him out. I get money for people being here. It yeah. makes sense. It makes sense. But more importantly with Oliver. Well, like medium important. This is like so unimportant. It doesn't even matter. I am offended. Okay, t- okay. The horse racing thing. The horse racing You're thing. You're telling me that that's not important. Wind. Has been entered in a bunch of races by an Elysian. Yeah. As Oliver as the jockey. Yeah. And they're winning. And they're winning. Oliver's a little horse boy. He loves horses. I know. And he's winning the horse races. Yeah. Tell me what this has to do with anything ever in the story ever. Ah. You just you you love all the side You wouldn't understand. <laughs> you just don't understand football, Marge. Oh, my God. I don't understand horse racing, turns uh, out. Okay. About why that's important right now at all. It's not. The most important thing, though, is that Oliver's like, oh, I'll just stare at your pretty eyes. Oh, and yeah. Matt has no idea where he picked up this complimenting women thing. Yeah, it's like, hey, you're too young for this. Where'd you learn that? Yeah. I don't know, Matt. I don't know, Matt. Yeah. Maybe everything that you do. It's like <laughs> when he's like, oh, how did he learn about men getting drunk in bars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Not me. No. No. So now, Nalesian says he's going to go prepare the men because Matt and crew have to go out searching for Elena and Nynaeve since they snuck off. And yep. literally, his only job here is to keep them safe. Yeah, and he can't ever find them. No, so. and he's supposed to be returning Elaine to Camelin for Rand, and he keeps losing her. Yes, it's not great for him. No. But yeah. Then we get some funny banter with Matt's servant and that guy. Who's- Naram, yep. That's he doesn't like that Matt's getting the coat all cut up and bloody and torn. And then trying to wear that out. Terrible. Oh. He's had enough. Is that the guy who sewed up his leg? Or is that someone else? That is someone else. Ooh. There was two of them. Are you sure? You don't seem sure. I'm not sure. I need to find out. You're right. It is Naram. Yeah. I was thinking Lopin because he's the other dude. Okay. But Naram's the guy who stitched him up. And he's like, that's... Burn See? you, Naram. That's a leg, not a bloody side of beef. This brain... Remembers oh. random names for no reason and forgets other very important names for other no reasons. That's true. That's true. That's what it's my like brain It's like of does. all the people you could remember, why Naram? Naram. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't know. Oh, You're man. asking the tough questions here, uh, that's true. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. All right. So basically, we have to go find the sneaky women and no one knows how they're leaving. It's a whole thing. Yeah. My initial reaction traveling gateways yeah Yeah. Yeah. it makes sense that matt doesn't even consider that as an option he doesn't i thought that was weird that he didn't i have a justification for it is because probably because initially coming into abudar they were so against opening a gateway anywhere even remotely close because of the dangerness like the danger level to people if you just open it up in the middle of like he doesn't really understand how it works so he's like that makes sense they're not opening up gateways no idea where they're going or why yeah he doesn't know why they're out on some mission all the time yeah they've told him literally zero 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 information, so it's not great. And I have a big point to talk about in a second about that. All right. Yeah. Also, Matt leaves his spear behind because that attracts idiots who want to fight him. Ah, yes. Yeah. Okay. So now it's perspective change to Elaine. Yes. Elaine and Brigida are in the Rahad looking through the streets, and unfortunately, everything looks exactly the same. Yes. This is the danger part of town. Yeah. So I just watched the latest leg of The Amazing Race. Oh, okay. Yeah. And there was a situation where people were running around the streets of, I think it was Greece. Okay. They were in Greece. They were running around. Everything was white plastered and everything looked the same. Hey. And the pit stop was a place called the White Tower. What? Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's so cool. In Greece. In Greece. I guess that makes sense. Okay. There's a tower that was painted white. That makes sense. Yeah. Everything's in Greece's. You know, no, but that place, it was called the White Tower, and it was like a super, super old... Yeah. Yeah. Fun fact that I never knew before, huh. but all those like white statues in Greece that everybody knows because they're like so many statues, used those all be used all to be colorful. painted. Yeah. They were painted and colorful and that. gorgeous. Like, I never knew that, but it's like, makes sense. Paint wears off. Yeah. But the, you know, statue remains. Mm-hmm. So, hey. Hey. Very cool. Yeah. Anyway, all these streets also look exactly the same. And no one has invented street signs yet. No. Or again? That's true. <laughs> ah, good wheel of time joke. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> Brett, we're almost halfway through the series. I think I get it. Yeah. Maybe I'll get it completely one day. <laughs> 
So they start heading through the street because this is a super rough part of the city. And this is where we learn that they've been sneaking out of the palace yeah. by disguising themselves using that inverted weave. The mirror of mists. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. This Illusion. is a form of it. And also doing the thing where you make it so that no one can tell you can channel. Yes. Because that's how they walk past right by Merlelli. Merlelli and then Adelius and Vandine, they've also like passed who are also in their hut searching. Who are getting accosted all the time. But they're also like tossing people through upper windows and yeah, stuff. Yeah, they also so. probably don't... <laughs> <laughs> they're not right. exactly like being uh, subtle about it. So. No. I mean, hey. Interesting conversation on our Discord. Okay. Jordo says how to keep Adelius and Vandine straight. Vandine rhymes with green. Okay. She's the green. Yeah, makes sense. Also, Matt RK 76 says... And their age is alphabetical. Adelius is the older sister. Okay. Hey, there we go. Cool facts. I will hope that I can remember that. Yeah. And <laughs> if you also oh. want to join our Discord to be a part of these really fun conversations, you can find the link to join our Discord on the wheelweavespodcast.com. Awesome. There you go. There you go. Also on our link tree on Instagram and Twitter as well. So go follow us there. All the places. All the places. Okay. Here we are. Okay. Now, where are we here? Uh, Abudar. Yes. We are wandering through random buildings looking for Cloud Bowl with no plan. Literally zero plan. And we, we have a little bit of a plan because what we're doing is we're pretending that we're on an episode of Storage Wars where we're like, hey, <laughs> we're trying to buy storage compartments and then we're going to like resell your shit yes. <laughs> so that they don't get stabbed yeah. by the people when they're trying to like break but into storage. But that doesn't places. work, <laughs> turns out. So now they're just not talking to people yeah. and they're just wandering into random buildings hoping that they don't get stabbed. Yeah, and I think that they've aged up their disguises a bit because they're less likely to be stabbed if they're like... If they're older. Or older or uh, divorced and like... Widowed. Widowed, things so like you, that. They're so. wearing their marriage knives... Correct. ...as widows or something, yeah, if I yeah. remember correctly. Yeah, it was like implied, so... And they've had a couple close calls. They have, like overly and close calls. And they've had to use the power to trip up some people. Yeah. And, you know, they got followed once. Yeah, some scary stuff. Some stuff. Now, we also get that it's been 11 days. Oh, yeah, here we go. Of this. Yeah, 11 days. This is the 11th day. They've had zero luck finding the bowl, and they don't even have any extra clues about where to find it. Which we find out why afterwards. Elaine thinks that it was on the sixth floor of a building, and Nynaeve thinks it was on the fifth floor of a building. So they can't even come to a consensus on where it was. And this was my initial concern about them hopping out of this place so fast and being like, we got to go there. And I was like, how are you ever going to find that there again? Exactly. And in my mind, it was like in a cellar, like down underground storage. Yeah. And it's not that apparently. It's up. It's up up a bunch of floors. Yes. They got to pass by a bunch (laughs) of people. (laughs) They got to find it. (laughs) This is all bad. It's very bad. Okay. You know what? It's really unfortunate that they didn't have like some sort of Taviran help who could like randomly choose a building randomly and then like maybe just like randomly wander into the right building with the cloud bowl. Uh It's just too bad they don't have someone like that with them in their traveling party. Who are supposed to be with them keeping them safe anyway. Mm -hmm. Too bad. Too bad. Too bad that's not a thing that happens. Shoot. That would be way easier. Yeah. And even when we see Matt, we go... Oh, let's avoid that guy. And we turn the other mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. Right. And then what does Egwene say? We're not even at Egwene's perspective yet, but what does Egwene say? Are you using Are you using Matt? And they're like, we're not even fucking talking to him. Yeah, <laughs> we hate that guy. <laughs> Don't even worry they're about it. Nynaeve girls. hasn't said a single word since we got to Ebu Dara. They're mean girls. Shoot. We're actually avoiding him completely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we get this whole story. I'm going to fast forward a little let's through do this. this like weird story that I'm sure is important but really i can't pick anything out of it oh okay i got such sketchy vibes it's so weird i know well you've been on about a whole big friggin' deal about this kind of thing but yeah okay tell the story maybe it'll come to you okay there's a fight some guy goes down sure elaine wants to step in to heal him and number one i was like elaine don't do that idiot well 
That would just raise a bunch of red flags, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's just like people don't like to interact with Aes Sedai. It's not like they're going to get extra stabbed because they are... Yeah, but they're disguised as not Aes Sedai. So, I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, so she steps in. Somebody else steps in first, shoves some stuff in his mouth, uses the power for healing. Yeah. The man gasps and then dies. Yeah. And the woman stands up and tells the dude to go tell his wife that... Yeah, it's literally what literally what Nynaeve was prior to being what she is now. Now She's I don't like a wise know. woman of Ebudar. It seemed weird and sketchy though. Why? I don't know. I got weird vibes. I got okay. weird vibes. It's Well you know like that there's like factions of yeah, wise women in I know. You know. I do know that. Okay. This was different and weird. She's okay. not from here, number one. Sure, but that's Elaine. Number two, it seemed like she intentionally kills him. Oh. Yeah. You know how healing works though, right? Yeah. She didn't do it right. She like did it wrong on purpose and kills this guy. No, but you know how healing works where it's like the body takes a lot of strength. So if you're like close to death anyways, healing might not even help. Ah. Uh, like that's like a known thing we know fair. about healing. I just thought this was like weird. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So this is Asra. Well, you were, you were, this is Asra. Yeah, yeah. And I'm keeping that name sure. forever in my head. Sure. Until she comes back again in three books from now. You've been like on a really hard tangent about a very specific thing that we've seen with Adelis and Vandine and their friggin' cover story for the last couple of chapters. And you haven't connected this? What? I actually have no idea. Like, I'm so confused. What? what was Adelis and Vandine's cover story for coming along? They're looking for runaway, like... Oh, runaways. Runaways. Who can channel. Okay. And Elaine thinks, uh, as a description of this woman, as like, oh, she wouldn't have She's been... She's a wilder. A- she wouldn't even be able to be tested for accepted had she been in the tower. Yeah. So it's like she's weak. Because she's weak. She's like, I don't know. It's like, that's what I thought you were going to no say. Way. But like That has nothing to do with this. Okay. <laughs> I just thought, you no. go really hard in like a very specific direction ru- sometimes. No, 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 no. For me, the runaways yeah. are the runaways from the tower during the split. Got, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, like, maybe. of Aes Sedai. Gotcha. Who ran gotcha. away. I just had to clarify that because I thought you were going to no, go off on a whole thing about that. So, okay, that's Mm-mm. fine. That's fair. Yeah. Mm-mm. Elaine thinks this is weird and sketchy. I think this is weird and sketchy. Yeah. But Brigitte says, not today, Elaine. Yeah. And Elaine's like, okay. Well, and I don't even like the whole Elaine thing where she's like, what's she doing here? She's not even from here. And it's like, yeah. you're not from here either. What yeah. are you doing here? That's fair. But <laughs> it's true. It's a weird thing to hold against her. I know. It just all, oh, everything is so sketchy okay. and weird. Azra. 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 Yeah. I'm going to remember Azzy. it forever. Okay. Azzy. Oh, you see, now I'm definitely going to remember it forever. Okay. Okay. Now, we don't want to get noticed, so we're going to move on. And then this is where we see Nielsen. Nielsen? <laughs> What's his name? Nalesian. Nalesian <laughs> and Matt. They're heading down the street, and they're clearly searching for them. So they're like, ooh, we got to go. And Brigitte's like, hey, I never noticed, but Matt might be dangerous. Yeah. You know, fair. Matt's a prankster. He's like a jokester and he yeah. like doesn't take anything seriously. But when they're looking at him in this scenario, Brigitte's like, oh, that guy actually might know what yeah. he's doing. It's like a guy in a very dangerous place and it doesn't look like people are like necessarily messing with him. Messing with him. It's like, yeah, I maybe mean, he knows how to handle himself. Maybe. This interaction was weird. Yeah. They go the other direction. They keep searching. It's dangerous. It's going bad. It's going bad. Yeah, it's going bad. So, perspective change to Egwene. Yes. Okay. This is good. Yeah. So, Egwene is currently visiting Loghain in his tent because they are on the move on the way to somewhere from Saladar. They are. Well, we know where. The tower. Well, yeah. Yeah. That was the plan. They're marching north. They're the marching to the tower. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, there are six sisters sitting... That's an alliteration. It is. Six sisters sitting here, maintaining a shield on him. As is tradition. As is tradition. This is where we learn that it's a tradition. As is custom. Yes. Egwene had suggested that they just like tie off the shield and leave it because like... That's a no. We don't need all this manpower here. Also because she wants to have a private conversation with Loghain. Yeah, she does. Yeah. That's probably why she wanted them to tie it off and, like, leave. Leave. Because, like, I don't want you to be here when I ask Loghain about what he thinks about going to Rand. Yeah. I want him to go, and I want to tell him to go there. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't because they're not going to leave because they can't do that. So Tell me why Egwene wants Loghain to go to Rand. You tell me why. Now you tell me why. Did you not read this chapter? I know I did. Because I she did. is confident that the Hall is going to, like, vote to gentle Loghain again. Okay. Or maybe do Delana's plan... 
who's under orders from Halima, who's yeah, that Erengar one, that Forsaken, one too. to murder him. Yeah. So she knows that that's going to be bad. We shouldn't kill Loghain. We shouldn't gentle Loghain again. We should at least see. This let is him my go. thing. People kind of fought me a little bit when I was like, Egwene is going to be on Rand's side." Sure. I said that, and people like fought me, and I was like, "No, if she's sending Loghain, hoping he gets to Rand's farm, Black yeah. Tower, there's got to be some feeling of like." mutual gain here there's a little bit but i will point out that she thinks about that as in like i want him to go to rand because at least then we might be able to have some sort of control over him i don't like that because it's like hey Egwene, you once you let someone free that you don't have to control anything about him like that's not on you anymore you should never have done that in the first place but like well maybe in the first place control of Loghain or rand well, probably both, but like mm. she wants Loghain to go to Rand because she thinks at least if she, uh, if he's with Rand, they'll be able to at least control what's happening a little bit. Mm. But it's like you guys have no control over what's no, happening. No, definitely there. not. And when so. you unleash a caged dog, yeah, there's no way he's still going to be loyal to yeah. you. And like he's not a dog any, like he's not a dog. But You're right choosing. now, no, but here he's a caged dog. Oh yes, yeah, for and sure. And if but... you let him go, he's not just going to be loyal to you. <laughs> yeah. Because you were nice to him once. And, and you're not nice to him here. You're not you're nice to him. You're in fact very mean to him. No. And I mean, like, I feel like there's a way about it. And maybe if there weren't other sisters around, yeah. this would have gone a little better. But, like, in, in a sense, it seems like she's also riling him up to a point where he's wanting to go to Rand. Because it's like, screw you guys. I'm going to Rand. I don't which think... Which is what Egwene wants. Mi- yeah, I think so. But I don't think she riles him up on purpose like this. Yeah, that's fair. I think, I think it just that that's sort the, of happens. That's what happens, and it's a yeah. little bit lucky, but maybe. Sure. Okay. Okay. Anyways, let's so talk they're in the middle too. of a conversation. Logan says, "You want to know what I think of Althor's amnesty?" And Egwene's like, "Yeah, I want to know your thoughts. You'd be given a place of honor there, and you know, here you might be gentled again." Yeah. And then this offends Logan. He's like, "Would they really do that to me? Because yeah. I've done literally everything any of you have wanted." Yeah. And I'm being treated like a criminal, so, like, what's the deal here? Yeah. So, also, very important note, Egwene has no idea that Loghain has his, like, full strength back. Oh, no. She has no clue. She thinks he's as weak as Lyanna and Swan. Yeah, she's like, hey, like, two or three sisters could hold him if she's as weak as Swan and Lyanna are. So, there is a severe lack of communication or, like, information. Information passing, absolutely, because it's just, like... When so many things have to be relayed to her, yeah, critical details are clearly well. Missed. It's like Nynaeve and knows she's that not Logan's asking strong. the very specific questions. She doesn't know to ask. Yeah, right. Because it's like, yeah, they're all healed again, and nobody specifically talked about the power levels. Nynaeve should have. Yeah, been but like, there are hey, so many things to fill Egwene in on. Yeah. That's just like one of the small things that was like, oh, by the way, Logan's back to full strength. That's not a normal, regular thing. Yeah, it's like, why wouldn't he be? Yeah. Like, that's not necessary. Like, why would he be and at a lower level? So Egwene had specifically asked, but she just assumes and everyone assumes that everyone has the information when they don't. Lack of information, lack of communication. Here we there are. You go. It doesn't that's even it matter. But Egwene's like, you got to calm down. I swear to you, you'll never be harmed. Let's discuss this again in a day or two. Yeah. I swear you'll not be harmed as long as the people, like, hopefully don't harm you. Yeah. It was mm. a super medium, like, yeah. I swear. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then as Egwene heads away through the camp, she leaves there, and we get some details about what's been going on. It's been 16 days since yep. they left Saladar. So timeline lines up. So this is the same day that Elaine and Nynaeve are on the 11th because day. Because they traveled in for Ebudar. five days. Yeah. Okay. And then 11 days in Ebudar. So it's like same day. Same day. Cool. So they and Bryn's army have traveled over 200 miles. Yeah. And Matt's band is following them the entire way, keeping about a 10 mile distance. Yeah. So it actually looks like two armies are marching. And they're not friendly. And they're not friendly. Because they're not exactly friendly. No. But there have been lords and ladies in Altara, yeah. which is like a turmoiled land to begin with. This right? is basically just a giant scheme that's been devised. So, and it's actually pretty uh, interesting how it works. So, nation or like lords and ladies see two armies going through, and they're going to be like, "Oh, we should go with the stronger of the two armies." 
So a army. I just don't army, understand why lords and ladies feel the need to go with any army. You have two armies passing by, and like you're going to get swept up, up by somebody, and but you want to align. But why do you need to be swept up? That's, That's my just problem. what happens when a passing army comes through. They're going to be like, "You for us? You against us?" Okay. And you're like, "I'm going to be for the bigger one." Okay. So a Gwen's army is kind of like gaining people, and that she thinks about the fact that like. She's the Amerlin. They have a hall of the tower, and these lords and ladies are kind of getting like scammed into joining, and they don't really know what's going on or where they're marching or what's happening. So, like, she literally thinks about it. It's like, and they've aligned themselves with yeah, her, so and they can't really back out of it now. So, okay, it's working. It's Not part a bad of the plan. plan. Actually, I had no idea. I've just been waiting for you to explain this part to me. Yeah. So, okay. so basically, what's happened is like Matt's army being here is making Egwene's army grow. And, like, Matt's is probably growing a little bit, too, but, like, yeah. mostly... But because Matt's not, like, it's not a... Matt's yeah. not there either, so, like, it's it's kind of a weird thing. Yeah. But uh, I will point out a couple rules about shielding men we got to talk about, because this applies to Rand, and Rand and the six soft points and all that stuff. Okay, go. Okay, so the rules part of custom is that, number one, there has to be the six that are maintaining the shield, okay? And then the big thing is they have to maintain the shield and not tie it off. Okay. Yep. And then they have to use every bit of their strength directed at the shield. They can't split their weaves. So that's why there's different that's points. Why, well, that no, that's why there was thirteen and two. Thirteen to shield him. Because someone can't to, split off to bind him by custom. Okay. And then for the six holding him, it was the it was the six that are holding Rand by with custom all of their with strength. all of their strength and not tying it off. They must maintain the shield. Okay. And then. Rand is thinking six soft points. Okay. Tuck it away. We'll come back to it. Yeah. Soft is a word that... Rand knows it's important and he doesn't know why. Well, I feel like it's something is soft is breakable. Interesting. Okay. Because I feel like if something is like hard, like iron or metal or steel, it's not breakable. But if something is soft, it can be like broken or manipulated in some way i think the opposite oh i think like glass is hard but it's breakable interesting like pillow soft but you throw it and it's not gonna break Break. right interesting okay because i see it as like it's malleable (laughs) and you can like push through it if it's soft okay it okay but i'm thinking of something that can't be broken that's hard Mm -hmm. like glass is hard but it can but like what if it's like diamond or hard can't break quendiar ma but that can break now if it's super old and it's time to break. Well, if it's a seal for the Dark One's prison. Uh, 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 <laughs> loophole. Loophole, maybe. Okay, or, let's or there's get back. A, okay, this is how we know this chapter is kind of boring because okay. we go on a million tangents. So This is important stuff. Okay, go. I know it is. Yay, it is. It's important yeah, yeah, for us yeah. to talk about, but yeah. we need to do some bonus episodes. Because I'm just like tucking this stuff away for you for later so I can revert back to it and be like, we remember so when we talked about this? I know, I know. So. We have so many extra points. We need to pump out some bonus episodes, I think. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's interesting that we have the exact opposite view of what the word soft means. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. That means I'm wrong. <laughs> <That's what> that... <laughs> I, hate, I hate that so oh, much. Oh, no. Okay. All right. So, Gwen's going to go to bed. Yeah, it's bedtime. Yep. Because she has a meeting in Teleranriad with Elaine and Nynaeve tonight. Their 11th day here. Yeah. Chase so... is still here, too. The maid. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And she sends her away. So she can sleep alone, because that's a perk of being the Amerlin. Yeah. She lets us know. Yeah. Okay, so she gets into Saladar. That's the meeting place. That's the new Starbucks that's just popped up. We're going for coffee, having a meeting. And Nynaeve and Elaine pop up to where Egwene is. Egwene jumps straight to it and asks if they've had success yet, and that's going to be a no. Hard no. Yeah. They say they're sure it won't be much longer, but Egwene <laughs> says, you know, they should join her in the army. They should give it up. And Nynaeve's like, no, the Cloud Bowl's so important because it's so hot everywhere. Yeah. Okay. And I just got to say, like, that's actually true because right now it's supposed to be like around winter time. It's okay. supposed to be winter. Is it? I've lost track of all time. Completely. It's supposed to be winter. It's so unlike me to just like not yeah. care. People like- told me I would get to a point. Well, yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah, we got a little while ago, we got like, oh, it's supposed to be the first frost or the first snow of winter. And it's like, we're supposed to be in winter coming up here. And it's hot like and it summer. And the world is burning. Yeah. So they need to correct the weather or the world is going to die because there's not going to be mm-hmm. food for anybody. Yeah. So it's bad. All right. And to be fair, 
we don't even know 100% if this Cloud Bowl can fix this. That's true. We don't. We don't. But Elaine is pretty sure. <laughs> so that counts. Okay, so they're doing okay since they've been spending every night in the palace. So, you know, they can't exactly get into much trouble. It's just yeah. all the daytime stuff in the roughest part of town. That's yeah. terrible. And they just are wandering around because that's the problem that they're having. That's so. literally a problem. Yeah. So the topic changes to Matt. We talked about this already. And Gwen's yes. like, are you going to use him? And they're like, no, no. We hate him. Yeah. We don't even keep him around. So We don't talk about him and we sneak away from him. It's kind of funny because like. He's, Matt's Taviran. Yeah. And they know he's Taviran. And in a world. They don't think about it. But it's like in a world where no, Ran doesn't too exist. too self-centered. In a world where Ran doesn't exist, where the Dragon Reborn isn't a thing, Matt would be the most important figure in the world. And Perrin. Because he's Taviran. But yeah. if like, if it was only yeah, Matt. Yeah, because Archer Hawkwing and exact like, it's that's like, another that's example, a, right? That's a freaking thing. The pattern has called him out yeah. for a purpose and mm-hmm. you're just like ignoring him. Well, it's because they're so self-centered. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. So Elaine asks if Egwene has spoken with the Dreamwalkers yet because they're like, okay, listen, we really need to go back into Teleron Riyadh and do the need thing again. Yes. And I actually was going to say that. Okay. I was like, why don't they just do find it again? Yeah. Just go look for it. Can't. Can't. You can't just go. It'd be like eating the same apple twice yeah, or something Yeah, you did it like already. That. It's done. Why do you need to find it twice, idiot? Right. You should have taken better directions. You should have. Also, though, here's a point. They could search for the Cloud Bowl in Teleran Riyadh, Ebu Dar. Okay. They don't have to go walking around dangerous Ebu Dar every day. Now you're thinking like a dreamwalker. Right. Yeah. Because go look for it there where you're not going to get stabby stabbed in every building. Yeah. Nynaeve and Elaine are not dreamwalkers. And then you could like, ma- <laughs> no. But you're thinking like one. There, it's like that's that's pretty high. That's a good level of thinking there. Yeah, because we're literally search the dream world. It's still there. Search the dream world. It's still there. Do it. Just because you can't do your knee jumping around, you can still narrow it down. You and just like zip zap around. Be like this building, this building, this building. Yeah, you literally don't even have to walk. Or better yet, you can fly around oh, Abu Dhar. Fly. You're like, Argh. yeah, and you know what? Yeah. You don't even have to worry about the Black Aja after They're you. They're not even looking for you. Except, you know what's a good rule of thumb? Always assume the oh, Black yeah, Aja are after you. But like two of them flying around at Budar looking at five and six story buildings. Hey, can... side note. Is Leandrin still just like shielded in wherever the hell she is? That's a good question. Because Mogedian's like pretty trapped. That's a good question. Oh my god. I forgot about <laughs> that guy. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Here we are. Oh, side note. Egwene has been meeting Bear and Malayne in yes. the dream world. Yeah. Amis hasn't shown up because I'm not teaching you anymore. Yep. And Egwene did not tell them that she's the Amarlin or even Aes Sedai. This is bad. she's worried that they won't believe her. But like, here's the thing. That's like just more lying. It's more lying. It's more lying by omission. Of course they're going to believe you because... I yield don't lie. It's bad to lie and yeah. you have incur more toe. You are by like omission. It's like that's a bad that's a bad thing. But... That's a bad thing. But yeah. turns out Moline was just super pumped about the twins thing that she's like, Oh, there's no toe and Also I'm gonna name my other baby after you. Yeah, so she's gonna have a little baby, Min and Egwene. Min and Egwene, there you go. That's gonna be great. Love Ron's it. gonna love that. Uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Now, Elaine asks about Rand. How's Rand doing? And Egwene says that, yeah, now he's in Kyrian, but he's just basically having a vacation in the Sun Palace. Yeah, kind of, sort of. That's what I said. He was having a vacation for a little bit. He was working hard. No, he was having a much-needed break. (laughs) But apparently the wise ones haven't been very upfront about what's been happening. They've been muttering about Aes Sedai needing to be beaten regularly. I want to talk about that, though, too, because the wise ones aren't being very upfront about things that have to do with Rand and what's going on with Rand and Kyrian. Because, I'm going to say this, because Egwene is Aes Sedai. Yes. Like, they know that she went back to be with Aes Sedai to be an Aes Sedai. Mm -hmm. And it's like that separation where it's like, we're still, we still like you. We're still your friend. We're still going to teach you. But it's like, you're Aes Sedai. And the wise ones have now put the Aes Sedai over here. Yeah, they don't like them anymore. They don't like them so much. And Egwene... They're not a, revered. Yeah, so they're not going to be sharing like Aes Sedai information they want to get back to the Aes Sedai about Rand yep. with Egwene. It's yep. not happening. Nope. So 
It's like there is uh, two levels of this relationship now. Right. And Egwene is worried that Marana in Camelin yep. somehow put a foot wrong with Rand. True. And she, she's correct. very concerned that Rand doesn't know how to handle Aes Sedai well or as well as he thinks he does. Right. And that was always her thing at the beginning. Yeah. And it turns out true. Sort of. It was more Marana's fault, if anything. Oh, that gonna... one? Yeah. But let's talk about what literally just happened, and it's because Rand didn't handle the Aes Sedai well. I blame the Maidens because they should have been there, whether or not he wanted them there. You know, to be fair, there are multiple points of blame yeah. in this situation, and it was <laughs> shocking. Oh, yeah. I beat myself up a little bit because I was like, man, I should have taken some stock but i never took these i said i seriously at all right i should have i should have at some point thought if ran just keeps putting them off yeah. are they just gonna be cool with this well this because yeah. the other i said i weren't well rand also didn't take them seriously even with the gold thing because he yeah. was like huh, do they think they can buy me with gold they're showing you gold and showing you the chests because eventually they're gonna shove you in one of them yeah I know. He got played. I know. And it never at any point was I like, oh, they're going to attack him. I thought maybe though, remember the whole practicing the amount of, Yep. I should, like, but it wasn't for that reason. I feel reason, like I was yeah. almost, almost ready to be there. And then I never got there and we didn't talk about it for too long. Yeah. Like it comes out of nowhere because. Yeah. yeah. We're not actively talking about the Kyrie and when I also I didn't, said I all the time. I, I never wanted to push you so far. I know. To, like, I, I was like, Brett, I why didn't that you ask you? me a million leading questions <laughs> to get me there? I would never take that away from you. I know. I want to do that. <laughs> this was very good. Okay. This was good. I was surprised. This got me. And I'm a very... I, okay. I feel as though I'm pretty good at predicting things. Oh, you sometimes. are. You're fantastic sometimes. And it's like, it's yeah. This I didn't. Annoyingly good at predicting things sometimes, especially with like TV shows. Yeah. We've talked movies. about, we talk about this all, all the time. All the time. Yeah. You're the worst but, to watch shows with. It's yeah, great. Like we literally say this all the yeah. time. But <laughs> <laughs> this one, I'm yeah. annoyed. I, I get annoyed with myself when I don't see things coming. But that to me marks a good book. Okay. Right? Like if they've done things so well. Well, but, this book might just get a little bit better too. Sometimes though, in other books, when it I know it hasn't been laid out so well, and then all of a yeah. sudden something happens, you're, you're like, like, what? Well, that Why doesn't that? make yeah. sense. Yeah. I don't like that. This though, got me. It's going to get better. Okay. So now we also have news come out about Perrin and Fael right, and their married. marriage. Yep. And then also that Loyal and Min are in Kyrian too. Yep. And Elaine asks... Egwene to pass along a message. Secret message. Super subtle. I hope that Min can come to like Avienda as much as she likes me. Yes. And we know what that means. And I just picture Egwene, if she was ever actually going to pass this message along, just completely fucking it up. Oh, yeah. Like giving because the wrong this message. This is so complicated. It would be like, hey, Elaine says she hopes you like Avienda and Min. Or like just like, <laughs> just like like to Rand. It's like the wrong message in the or, wrong way. Or says to Min, "Hey, Rand likes Avienda from Elaine." Like yeah. just completely wrong because it's so convoluted and stupid. And Egwene's like, oh, "I can totally see that." Okay. I mean, Egwene prefaces it, and she's like, "I'm not going to talk to her for like ever." So yeah. But, and then Elaine's like, "Okay, bye then." Yeah, that message is never going to get there. Yeah, and then Nynaeve stays behind to ask if Egwene has heard any news of Lan. Uh, nope foreshadow Ooh, like immediate foreshadow like you right away i actually felt this one <laughs> did you yeah this one you I, thought it was coming yeah you're like we gotta get specifically because Nynaeve is asking something of Egwene. sure which is i always signal a big deal right and this is like very sincere with no underlying like control or power or weird things you yeah know, their dynamic is very weird yeah this is legitimate concern we haven't even spoken the word land the name we haven't even seen it in text in a very long time yes so this was a signal for me that we were about to get land and now we know and i didn't even get a chance to like predict that because like three i know later, i know like, it's immediate <laughs> it's immediate but anyway i promise i felt that way but it gets better too okay Okay. Okay. Egwene comes out of Teleranrion and Swan is waiting by her bed. 
Yep. And Egwene is like, okay, is it done? And Swan weaves a ward against eavesdropping and is like, okay, of the six sisters on duty, only three of warders and they'll be on guard, but we gave them mint tea or they're going to get mint tea or something. With a little something extra. That they shouldn't taste. Yep. And Egwene asks if Swan thinks she's doing the right thing. And Swan's like, fuck you. You're the Amerlin. Yeah. Also, no, I don't want you to do this. Yeah. I think this is a terrible idea. Yeah. Turns but I mean, out this is big. It's setting Loghain free. Yeah. And hopefully he runs to Rand. Yes. And at this point, though, I really do think he's going there. I mean, he said he kind of says, like, I want to be there. I know he says that. We'll see we what happens. We can't trust everything. I know. But at this point, where would he go? Exactly. But here's the thing. So now we got Mazram Taim running the school. Mm-hmm. So Loghain is going to show up and then ran. Ungentled. <gasps> what? Repowered. Possibly. Maybe. Hard he, maybe. No, he is repowered. Oh, I mean like showing up. Oh, I know he's repowered. Okay. I know that. I know that part. <laughs> Uh, no, but this is big because, I mean, this is where we get the information that Egwene defends her position. The hint that position. Delana wants to murder him and that yeah. people want to gentle him. Egwene and... legitimately thinks that the Hall's going to vote to gentle him again. And why does Egwene care? Because if they, the whole opinion is that if they gentle men who can channel, that's going directly against Rand's amnesty. Rand yeah. And it's like, you are just gentling men still when I've put out this amnesty. Like that puts me against you, and they're trying to play like same yeah. side as Rand right now with this with the Salador oh, okay. Embassy. Well, and so. also I think that Loghain is maybe an exception in their minds because he already was gentled, and Rand doesn't necessarily know that he was. But that's the re- thing. Un-gentled. That's the thing. Is he an exception, or are they still going to continue to gentle men that they find? Right. Because that, like every I every I said I we've come across who's heard about the Black Tower is like we have to do something about that. Yeah. But it's like there's nothing to do about it at this point. It's not no, your it's effing done. business it's, anymore. Well, and it's done. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. That not only yeah. can you not do anything about it because there's too many now. It's not your business because the Dragon Reborn, the last battle, like this is legitimately, and this is the issue we have is that in this world there is a literal end of time prophecy that's for real. Yeah. Like, the the Dragon Reborn is an actual thing. Yeah. So, you know, when he says, hey, Amnesty's on. Amnesty's on. Amnesty's on. You gotta listen. Yeah. Okay. And so that's where we leave Egwene. Yes. Now we're gonna jump into the perspective of Morel. Yeah. She's with another Aes Sedai. Nassau. So that's the yellow. Okay. Who is ignoring Nynaeve a lot. Okay. Yeah. So they're out in the woods outside the army camp. And Nassau tells Morel that if it becomes known, you're going to get driven into exile and me with you for helping you. Yes. So 400 years ago, this might have been commonplace, but not today. Some people will call it a crime. And she's talking specifically about passing a warder bond against his consent. Yes. And now, to be fair, Moraine yep. did do this without Lan's consent. Definitely. But then she told him. Sure. Is so that he, is that he had time to like <laughs> protest and digest and whatever. And I mean, if, he and could he had verbally, t- but he couldn't do anything because it was done. No, and if he had a valid point, like maybe Maureen could had to have had time to sure. undo. Sure. Like I don't know how this thing works. So I have a question for you: Is this better, worse, or the same as bonding someone without their consent? It's different. Okay. It's not the same. And it's not worse. Okay. I think that the way Maureen did it. Sure. Was a little bit like, I it, mean, she did do it. It's a hard subject. It's a hard subject. Yeah. Because, I mean, initially Maureen and Land bonded through and they've spent a relationship and they did it uh, like with consent, consensually. Yeah. And they had like 20 years together, whatever, whatever. And then she did this one thing to pass it without his knowledge. Yeah. But you have to assume there's some level of like wanting the well wanting land's the well-being well to continue so it's like it may does she get a pass for that well yeah it's hard to say it's hard to say because this isn't exactly can i bring up another hard point no here's my point okay the last battle is coming yep and moraine wants lan alive for that and yes. doesn't want him just throwing his life away and so she does this to Fair. protect him. So this yeah. is like somebody putting something in their will that's annoying. Yeah. You know? Okay. 
It's a little different. <laughs> it's like, we don't really want to like drive this down to yeah. like, ah, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's no, annoying. it's still a big deal. <laughs> no, I, yeah, yeah. I know. It's still a very big deal. And hey. You can't do things to people without their consent. Morality and magic. Don't do it. Morality and magic is hard. I get it. But it is interesting too, because Maureen passed the bond to Morel before the whole like even Lan and Nynaeve thing became a thing. Yeah. Like she passed that bond back when they were still in the tower. Yeah. Long, 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 yeah, long, long time ago. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, so you'd want to be like, why is Maureen doing that way back she would when? Have, it would, I would have preferred Oof. it if she had an honest conversation with Lan, yeah. brought up a lot of good points, and got his okay yeah. to do this. And like, of course, he's going to say initially, uh, no. no initially, but like you could probably bring on board maybe after like, you know, 10 years or something. Yeah. Like, you know, slow play that, but, mm-hmm. you know, and it doesn't matter because she you did You know, it, it's going to be very done. awkward when Maureen comes back. Totally. Does she get that bond back? Does that come back to her? I honestly don't think so. Interesting. When the bond's been broken. Totally. Because you go to another dimension and don't come back for a little while. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yep. No, I get it. Good At point. some point, how many books does it have to be before I accept? Yeah, that's a good question. How many books are left in the series? Eight. That's how many books? Seven. That's how many books? Eight. Okay. Because math is hard. Okay. Well, that's how many books it's going to take for me to believe that Maureen's dead. Okay. The bo- the series has to end. Sure. And her not come back. Yeah. The question is how many years or books do you have to wait? So, I mean, yeah. Like two to three. Okay. Three, right? That's about as how many as we have left. About that. Four? Yeah. <laughs> math is hard. Math is hard. Especially Simple after addition, lots of shots and hard. a couple glasses of wine. So, yeah. here we are. Morel's perspective. Something's going on. Now, this yellow Aja... Very interesting. She studied sickness of the mind. Yeah, so Morel is here because she's like, she's I can a handle a psychiatrist. Like, I can handle a healing that needs to be done. Yeah. On land, but she's here to help land through this because psychological magical bond, issue. magical bond, psychological issue. Like land literally has a death wish because yeah. that's how the water bond friggin' works. Yeah. Waters do not survive their eyes that I dying. Yeah. Like very, very rarely. Right. Think of it as the same way as I said I, who are severed from the one power, typically right. don't survive mm-hmm. being cut off from the power. Same. Yeah. Okay. Same, same. Same, same. Okay. Now, we're about to kind of finish this chapter here with Lan showing up. Morel can feel him out there in the night coming closer. She's felt him since the bond was passed to her. And that was like a while ago at this point. Yeah. Morel yeah. has also thought that she'll have to keep this secret as long as she can so it's interesting that no one else knows yes except for nassau but it sounds like that they're they're the only two really okay yeah and then we get this summary of like lan's health condition which isn't good because he's passed through kyrian and or mirandi and now altara through lands with rebels and bandits and dragon swarms and it seems like he got into a lot of fights. Yes. Kind of hoping to die. No. 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 So the bond being passed compels him to take a straight arrow line to Morel. So he won't go off target to seek battle, but he's not going to like go around anybody to get to her. Okay. So that means he has to go through a bunch Regardless of bandits. Regardless of the dangers. He's just going to freaking go through the worst country possible, oh, straight okay. arrow, and that's why. Okay. So even Lan can't go through that unharmed. Okay. Now, this rider comes out of the night. We know it's Lan. And it almost is written like we aren't sure if it's Lan yet. It's for the whole dramatic, like, pause and, like, mic drop at the end. It's like, boom, Lan Lan Mandragoran. Mandragoran. So cool. Full name. Oh, yeah. Standing in front of her cold face. It's so cinematic. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. I love it so much. Yeah. And then. Nisau's in the background. She's like, this is madness. Yeah. And then Morale calls out to Lan, come to me. But Lan doesn't move. Yeah. And then Morale delicately weaves spirit and touches the part of him containing her bond. Nope. Contained in her bond. Okay. So the bond is something physical in your brain. Okay. And in Lan's brain. Okay. And she touches the part of it. That's in her bond. Delicate enough to know. Yes. For him not to know. So that's the thing is that 
there is a literal aspect of compulsion. We can we, we're going to yeah, call yeah, it that. Yeah. It's like compulsion through the water bond to make him do things. Okay. So when we talked about like, hey, yeah, how does yeah. that work? Alana tried. You and literally couldn't. like yeah. use the bond and use the power to compel your water to do things. Right. All right. And then he does. He starts to come towards her. Yeah. He's here. He's here. Lan Here's Lan. Color shifting cloak cool we're gonna get it and if this is kept a secret yeah Egwene is gonna know lan's here right how is Egwene gonna know that lan is here i don't know i guess i just assumed that he would be brought in well he might be but like secretly yeah okay they they met him outside of all the army so that nobody sees this going down Mm -hmm. so like the only people who know are her like morel and nassau and the their warders yeah and it sounds like they're going to hide him. Hmm. Okay. Well, very interesting. Okay. Now, before we wrap things up here, Light Blinded Fool, one of our new executive producers, wants to ask us a question. And part of the perks of being a producer level patron is that you get to ask a question or insert a comment into our regular episode and we'll talk about it. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So Light Blinded Fool wants to know... From me, if I think the Saladar Aes Sedai will decide to do a hit and run with gateways on the White Tower to steal the Oath Rod, Angriel, or other things, Mm -hmm. and if so, what do I think the purpose of this covert mission will be, and will they get some loot? Well, that's pretty easy. They're going to do the covert style, steal all the toilet paper from every bathroom. No, enough with the toilet paper. No one (laughs) cares about the toilet paper. Okay, okay. Okay, what do you think? Okay, no. (laughs) Oh, really? Okay, well, it's been speculated about before. Like, we should go steal some certain key objects. Yes. Right? Yeah, I do think that that would be good. Now, but it's not going to happen. I don't think so. Not with a Gwen in charge like this. Okay. And she's the one who would make the gateways, right? No one can make it. Ga- I mean, Elaine maybe is strong enough. Okay. Well, we've gotten that other sisters can make gateways. Barely. Some, some can barely make them, but there's others who can make them. I didn't get that. Okay. Well, that that's what it said. Okay. Yeah. Some can make them. Barely. Some can only make them barely. I thought they all could make them barely. Okay, that's fine. Anyway, okay, let's pretend that you're right and some can make them sort of. <laughs> okay. Like a tiny, maybe like whole doorway thing. Sure. And so, and they can go in and get it. Yeah. So maybe if any of the hall of the tower could do it and would want to do so without Egwene's permission, but if it were up to Egwene, I really don't think anything like this would happen. Interesting. So she's going to pass on it, but maybe somebody will do something. Oh, yeah. Especially the older ones who are really upset about the whole Aes Sedai becoming Aes Sedai without Getting my the stuff from my bedroom that I had to leave behind. Yeah, not right? quite. Yes. Not quite. Interesting, though. That's not something I really thought of. So that's... I'm going to go with no. I don't think Egwene would want that. Okay. I, I think like she it. likes being Amerlin and I said I without having a testing and without having to <laughs> swear on the oath rod. Yeah, right. I think okay. that she'd be against getting the oath rod. <laughs> okay, I like that too. I like that too. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, that'll about wrap things up here. Interesting, and I bet things are about to be even more interesting, so I can't wait to keep reading. That should actually be our new tagline cuz I feel like I say it every time. No. Oh, well, you know, two more episodes, so I know. Here we go. And next time is actually a lot of pages. Yes. It's like 40. Oh my God. It's quite long. Yeah. Cool. Can't wait. Okay. So before you go into a meeting with Aes Sedai completely unprepared and get attacked, shielded, and taken, I'm going to say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah. It's part of the pattern. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, edited by Danny, produced by Danny and Brett, with Essen, Passion Socks, Mozyme, Moltude, Benjamin, Michelle O'Brien, Jamie Young, Cody Fouts, Megan Smiley, Jonathan Reese, Vince Lewick, and Margaret, with music by Audionautics.
If you are interested in supporting us and the podcast and also getting some really cool exclusive merch and access to early episodes and bonus episodes, you can check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast. For general information about our show and us, like how to send us shot glasses, how to join our Discord, how to get in touch with us, things like that, for all things The Wheel Weaves, you can go to thewheelweavespodcast.com. Please be sure to give us that five-star review because it really does make a huge difference. And tell a friend about us because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks again for listening because this really is part of the pattern now.